Hello, and thank you so much for being with me this week. Um, thank you. And what we're talking about this week is we are going to be revisiting um, part one from last week, and then we're actually mostly talking about part two, which is all about like, um, well, part one and part one two is part one was like how to get started, and part two is how to stay on track. So if we haven't met before, I'm Kelly Howard, and I am the fitness consistency expert with a touch of adventure. If you've heard me say it before, um, basically what I do is I teach women how to get consistent with their fitness and then stay there because it's, it's this, um, tends to be kind of like this teeter totter thing that happens to us because life happens and usually we put ourselves last. So, um, so this is all about learning how to put yourself first, even if just little teeny pieces, okay? Just little teeny pieces. And once again, thank you so much for being here with you, being here with me today. <laughs> I'm Kelly. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Um, last week, we talked about like how to stay on, or actually how to get on track. And this week is part two of this two-part series, which is, once you're on track, how do you stay there? So this is a big one. Like this is probably the biggest one in fitness consistency because when I ask people like, what stops you? What stops you from having, you know, the fitness, the health, the body you desire? And it always falls into two things. One of them is that getting going. Like maybe I don't know what to do. I can't find the time. You know, all of those things that we covered last week. And then what happens is that people don't often think about the second half. And the second half is um, once we get going, we have to know how to keep going. And it's almost like we think that if we could just get started, all the magic happens and there we are, we're in, we're done. Like er everything's rocking and rolling. But the truth is, is that too often we start and then something interrupts, right? something interrupts us, life, <laughs> life happens, right? And we get a little bit off track and then maybe something else happens and we get a little bit more off track. And then the next thing you know, the best laid plans, right? Like all of our good intentions are gone. And it's only because like it can, it's only because we just didn't have those little tools and tricks we need to stay on track once we get started. And that's what I want to talk about today, because these are these are the things they're the quickest ones I know um, to or maybe not the quickest or not all the quickest, but they are all the probably most effective ones I know to get us started and get us moving. Because the truth is, is that like, like I just said, but like at its simplest form, fitness consistency is only two things. It's knowing what to do and starting right. And then knowing what you need to do to stay on track. That's it, right? I mean, <laughs> at its simplest. Like there's lots of things that go in there and we, you know, we mix and match and things come up and we have to learn how to deal with life. But in general, like that's it. And so what you think about is that a lot of what I'm gonna talk about today is just like shortcuts I know to get your brain on board because our brain is our biggest ally or our biggest foe like that it's our brain not our body like our bodies like to move right like once you get going you notice how you sleep better you feel better your energy is higher um you're nicer <laughs> i'm always nicer to people in traffic when i've been exercising consistency consistently but um that's you know that's our body enjoying it but it's our brain <laughs> that we really need to get on track and so these are going to be like the simplest filters I know to, um, to, to get us to start, restart, and continue to stay started when we need to. So the first one I want to talk about, and we've, I've mentioned this one before, it's what we call FPA. That's F-P-A. It's a joke within the coaching group, but it's also not a joke because it's like something that you always come back to. Last week, we talked about getting clarity on what you wanted and getting a plan and getting started, right? But FPA stands for friggin' plan ahead, okay? And what that means is that 
so often when we have, let's say we have a schedule, we've got a schedule for a week. We know what we're going to do this week. Um, here's an example from my life. So I knew this week I was going to go one of my days, one morning, I was going to go uh, do a hike, early morning hike. And I also knew that I had a late night the night before. <laughs> And what I didn't do was FPA. So that morning I'm scrambling around and my brain is going, oh, we don't have to do this. Like, why don't we go tomorrow? We can just put this thing off, right? Let's just put it off. Let's go tomorrow, right? Um, but the truth is, is that I'm already scheduled for something else tomorrow. And I'm smart enough to know that if I fall prey to the what about, why don't we start tomorrow? Why don't we start next week? then it suddenly becomes, why don't we get started next month? So that planning ahead, that FPA, just friggin' planning ahead is so small. Like it's so small that no one wants to do it. It could be as little as putting your clothes out the night before and the water that you need to take with you or um, checking the weather app so you know, <clears throat> like I didn't do, so you know what the weather comes in the morning, right? So it's just those little teeny, teeny things, but all they're gonna do is they're gonna shave a few minutes off your, if you're, if it's a, if you're rushing in the morning, it's just gonna shave a few minutes off that morning, but more than anything, what it's gonna do is it's going to take your brain out of the equation, right? Love your brain, <laughs> don't let it drive you in the morning because if you do, it's gonna be like, stay in bed, we can do this tomorrow. So make sure you plan ahead. And the other thing about it is that our brains love clarity, right? So if, if we have a plan and we have clarity and we've, we've already put that FPA in plan or in, um, <laughs> we've already put that F FPA in order, then what's going to happen is that um, we're just going to follow through without having to think about it. No decision fatigue, <laughs> especially at six in the morning, way too early for decision fatigue. So then the next one is that I'd like to talk about is um, accountability. Okay. Accountability is, it's such a big deal, okay? It is something that we always, like we're always striving to become 100% accountable to ourselves. That's, you know, that's like, that's like the, the unicorn we chase with accountability. But, and I'm gonna use the word but there, but um, accountability also is something that we're more likely to do if we have others on board. Okay, this was one of the reasons for the whole 12 week accelerator plan. Um, and if you haven't done that yet, or you haven't checked it out yet, definitely get on my calendar because people are, people are finding that like the accountability that we're giving, like this is layered accountability on steroids, but that accountability that we're giving and helping them with is turning things from, oh gosh, you know, I was, I was consistent for two weeks to, I am stinking rocking it. Like, I'm seeing people 12 weeks into the program already in everything that they've done. So like, like it's a big deal. So why does accountability work? Okay. Um, if you've listened for any time, you've heard me say that, you know, there's good, good accountability, bad accountability, bad accountability is your best friend. <laughs> she always lets you off your hook, the hook. Another bad accountability is your life partner. Um, they know your triggers. Hey, would you rather sit on the sofa and you know eat ice cream and watch Netflix? Or do you really wanna go for that long walk tonight? Right, like, I mean, they know your triggers. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's other ones, apps. Like apps are mm, kind of okay accountability, but not great because you can ignore them, right? You can totally ignore an app, turn off the notifications, you're done. Um, that said, we are using an app in um, the 12 week accelerator, but the difference is, is that in this app, everybody gets put into a um, like client groups, like a team. And in that team, you get to see like nothing else. This is the only thing you can see. And if you just like truly don't want anybody to see this, we'll turn it off. But everybody, is, everybody has said, yes, you can see everybody's calendar and you see what they're doing right? You see whether or not they clicked off the, um, I don't know, whatever their goal is for the day. Was it a hike? Was it a um, eating a certain number of calories? Was it like whatever it was, right? You see the clicks and that's so powerful. It's powerful because you see other people achieving. So that's one kind of accountability. And then you also know that other people see you achieving or not. 
So that's another kind of accountability. And I mean, there's tons of accountability. Like you can get accountability buddies. If you get accountability buddies, at least have two others. Like make sure it's at least a threesome. Okay. And the reason is, is because if one person starts, you know, accountability slipping, then you've still got someone else in there with you. Um, otherwise, if it's just one other person, I'm sure you've heard me tell you this story a thousand times, but like my really, really good friend used to always say, Hey, you know what? I want you to hold me accountable. And I'd be like, okay, <laughs> we've done this before, but sure, well, let's do it. And, you know, and then she'd quit responding. And about after a week, I'd be like, Hey, I got it. We got to stop this because it's bothering me more than it's bothering you. Um, so, so those kinds of things, like make sure you've got a threesome. If you're doing accountability buddies, um, do more than an app, uh, look at something like an accountability coach. Like that's part of the 12 week program is I am being a one-on-one -on -one accountability coach with everybody. And it sounds like a lot, but it's not because I have a very clear, um, I have a very clear outline of what everybody wants to do and when they want to do it. So I can just drop in and check on them. Like, how are you doing? And like the other day, someone said, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm getting ready to, to not do my workout today. And I don't know what it's going to do to me because it's, you know, it's good. I can't do it this weekend and blah, 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 like all these things. And like, what's going on? She says, I, I got a vaccine and I just feel a little yucky. So I said, why don't you do this? Like, if you truly can't finish that up, that was on a Friday. And I said, if you really can't finish this up this weekend, because her gym is closed on the weekend, then why don't you take a little nap, go to the gym and don't push yourself a hundred percent, you know, give it, give it 80%, give it 70%, but just go do the action so that you don't feel like you let yourself down. And sure enough, that's what she did. She did the action afterwards. She texted me and she said, you know what? Actually, once I got going, I felt great. Um, I just was kind of feeling maybe a little sorry for myself, but now I feel fine. My uh, workout was super and I appreciate it because otherwise I would have felt like I was behind and I'd let everybody down. So looking for those little pieces of accountability that you can have help you stay on track. Um, it's, it's important. And just like, I mean, maybe you don't have all these things. Maybe you don't, maybe you aren't part of the 12 week program. Maybe you don't have a buddy system. Maybe you have to rely on an app, but whatever it is, I mean, even one other piece of accountability is simply getting a calendar, something that you can see, like this is a visual reminder. You put it on the wall, you put down all the workouts that you're going to do and you check them off. Check box, check box, check box. So old school, right? Like so, 1960s <laughs> but but it works there's a reason we used to do it there's a reason i still do it okay i use that when i need to when i really need to accomplish something that's what i do that's one of my accountability pieces um okay so another one is thinking about um a visualization okay now a visualization is some people don't have like you know like really um vivid imaginations but a visualization can be something as simple as finding something that reminds you or lets you know that you are on track to what you want or you've achieved what you wanted. So let's think of an example. An example could be, um, I mean, it could be like one of them people use is it could be like getting on the scale and it's saying the number that you like or that you want to have, right? That's, that can be used as a visualization. Not my favorite because like, you, you know me, I think scales are a little bit like on the Satan's side and they're a little capricious too. So, um, but if that's gonna work, that's what you use. Uh, another thing could be maybe seeing yourself getting into an outfit that you've been wanting to wear or see yourself, you know, posing with your, well, <laughs> I've got my bat sleeve uh, sweatshirt on today, but see yourself like posing with a, um, with, with defined muscles or see yourself running a race you've been wanting to run or completing something or doing a trip that you've been wanting to do. Like, like find something that has a vivid visual that you can see, like you can really like see it. Um, I've used a lot of my clients who are runners, like, 
if they've got a run coming up and they're worried about their time, like we we actually look and see what the um, uh, finish line is going to look like, right? Like some of them have balloons, some of them have, you know, whatever that finish line is going to look like. We look and see what that finish line is going to look like. We see the clock, right, with the time that they want and see them going across the finish line with that clock over there on the right-hand side showing their time. Like there's so many ways of doing this. But what it does is it allows you to, I mean, this, there is a saying that our brain doesn't know the difference between um, real and imagined, okay? And, you know, at first I thought that was kind of a silly thing to say, but the more I look at it in my life, I realize it's probably true. And so if you can really see it, like, like really visualize that thing that you want, then you're so much closer to it you are so much closer to it, okay? Um, and then there's, I guess, one next step to that might be to have um, a fitness statement, okay? And a fitness statement, years ago, um, affirmations were all the rage, like, you know, I am, I am good enough, I am strong and beautiful, whatever it is, like, you know, that's an affirmation. It's usually an I am. The problem with affirmations, I mean, I, and I, and I'm not anti-affirmation, but the problem with them is, is that a lot of times if we're just running around going, you know, I am sexy and strong or whatever your affirmation is, the back of our brain's like, no, you aren't. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're lying to yourself. You're not like whatever it is. So you have to sneak up on them. <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure this is like whoever wrote the book on affirmations is rolling their eyes right now. But to me, you sneak up on them. And one way you can sneak up on them is by um, turning it into a question that you answer with a statement. Like, and let me think of a good one for a second. So a question might be like, why do I wake up feeling so amazing? It's a question, right? Why do I wake up feeling so amazing? And then your answer, the statement is, it's because I'm so healthy and vibrant, right? When you turn that little statement on, or that little question on and then answer it, our brains like that, right? Our brains love questions. Like if you think about it, like it's kind of like a dog with a bone. You toss a question out there, our brains are going to be like looking for reasons for it, right? Why do I wake up so um, vibrant and healthy? Because I had a great night's sleep. Um, because I'm exercising and I'm sleeping well. Like all of those kinds of things. It, it's good for us to, to look for things that we need those strong, happy answers for. So that's, that's another piece of what you can use. It's kind of, it goes along with the visualization, but it's different. Okay. Then now we're going, now we're going down into the woo woo stage, but this is, this is super powerful. Okay. And this comes from my NLP training. So what I, what it's called is it's called anchoring. Okay. And when I, this goes, actually, this goes back to when I was in my twenties and I was learning to run. And I'm, I am not an, I am not a natural runner. I am kind of like um, a plow horse out there doing her damnedest to run around the, run around the field. I don't know why I'm just not a great runner. Um, so what I would do is as I was running and I would finish a mile, I would squeeze my thumb and my forefinger together and be like, I can run. <laughs> Can't believe I'm telling you guys this. <laughs> I can run. And it would, it would make me realize that, yes, I just ran a mile, which I'd never done before. And then two miles and then three miles. And, and then I was actually running 10 Ks. So, you know, still like a plow horse, but doing them. So that was an anchor for me. And the anchor was putting that finger and um, my thumb and forefinger or index finger together and squeezing, squeezing as I said it. Um, another way to anchor is, and, and you may have heard me tell this story before, but I was in Costa Rica um, on one of our trips and we're in the jungle in our tree houses. And I happen to be in the area that's kind of like the, um, it's the group area for the tree house. So I'm standing there and I'm looking down the river, it's night. And so, you know, the river, you can just see it barely by the light of the stars actually. And I can hear it rushing by. It's deep down in the canyon, deep down in the canyon. And I'm way up high. And then I look up and there's a tree and on the tree are all these little stars. So it looked like I had, um, looked like you had little twinkle stars on the trees. 
And so looking out there and looking at those stars on the tree, basically looking like they were being held up by the branches, listening to the river roar by, just looking at the magic of where I was, um, I got this feeling and the feeling was, wow, this is how life should feel. This is how life for me should feel. I love this. And at that moment, I went, oh yeah, anchor this in. And back to the fingers, this time, this time I took my middle finger and my thumb and I just rubbed them together. And part of the part of it is because our fingers are so sensitive. Uh, we don't really think about it, but they're one of our most sensitive parts on our body. So by rubbing that um, middle finger and forefinger or middle finger and thumb together and just really feeling, really feeling that moment, I can, when, let's say when, um, maybe I'm, maybe I'm all stressed out, like work is too much, I blah, 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 all this stuff. I can stop, pause, rub those fingers together, that middle finger and my thumb, take a deep breath and I am back there. And I remember why I do what I do. Because for me, that moment, not only was it stunning and beautiful and all of the things I love, it also had required a lot of effort, physical effort to get to where we were at that point. And, and I'd done it, right? So that's an anchor. Um, other kinds of anchors you can think of are, um, mm, let's think of a good one for you. Let's say when you finish a workout, okay? Doesn't matter what it is. Maybe you finish a hike, maybe you finish a strength training, doesn't matter what you do. But you feel how good you feel, right? Like you, I mean it by that, like you feel it in your body, like how amazing you feel having done what you just did, right? Like, wow. I just knocked out that hike or wow, I just knocked out that hill training or wow, I just did whatever it is. And you pause and you really get to where you can feel it in your body, like how proud you are. This is, I am proud of myself for having done this. And then do something with your fingers. I like the fingers. Maybe bring, maybe bring your, um, your index finger and your thumb together. Maybe bring that middle finger and your thumb together, but just squeeze gently and feel it. Like really feel what it feels like to do what you just did and feel proud about it. Because anchoring is one of those things that's quick. Oh my gosh. You can, once you get used to this, you can, you can use, you can use smell. You can use, I like using touch. I like using touch because it's so quick, right? Like I just rub those fingers together and boom, I'm back there. Um, but it can be like a candle. You can use a candle that reminds you of something or you can use um, taste. We, we anchor with taste, if you think about it, like, or, well, let's, let's use smell first. How many times have you smelled something and it just like, all of a sudden it brings back this, um, this, this reminiscent of something in your life, right? Or even when you taste something. And so that's anchoring. Anchoring, you can use all your senses. You can use one sense, you can use all of them. It's, it depends on how powerful you want to make it, but it is something that will allow you to bring yourself back to that place you want to be and keep yourself on track. Okay. Um, those are some good ones. Okay. Let's just go back over them really quick. Like the first one I think I talked about was, and I'm checking my notes really quick, was simply FPA. Like we have to have clarity and then we need to plan ahead. Okay. And clarity comes from what we talked about last week, but just remember, you have clarity, you have clarity in your scheduling, you have clarity in your desires, you have clarity in your why. And then you plan ahead in your schedule and you plan ahead for the day. Don't, you know, don't do what I did. <laughs> I'm not perfect. Don't do what I did. Don't do me running around in the morning going, oh, but maybe I don't want to do this. Yeah, just plan ahead. Okay. And then think about your accountability. Like, where are you going to find that accountability? Who's going to be your accountability buddy? Um, how are you going to become 100% accountable to yourself? And if you want some like accountability on steroids, just check out in the show notes. You go to the show notes, look for where it says one-on-one -on -one call, and let's get on a call and see, see if you're a fit for the program because the program is 
really effective. Um, and then after accountability, you want to be able to do um, visualization, like see yourself, feel yourself, being where you want to be, doing the things that you want to do, whether it's, you know, hiking in the Smoky Mountains or biking somewhere or simply grabbing the kids, the grandkids and tossing them around the pool or racing your kids down the road. Doesn't matter, right? Like see yourself where you want to be. Come up with a question that helps facilitate that, that feeling that you want. Like, why do I feel so great? Why did I sleep so well? Why? Like, why did I X? Why am I X? Because leaving that open for your brain, your brain will be like, hey, I slept so well because A, I didn't eat a bunch of sugar yesterday. B, I exercised. C, um, I meditated. D, you know, I'm in a better place than I was. Whatever, right? Have that question statement. And then the last one is find ways to anchor in the feelings that you want and those peak experiences that you enjoy having. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know and I will see you next week. And make sure that you go back and listen to part one if you didn't, because that gets you right over to what we talked about today. See you later. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye now.